Tea is very important in my life. Just when I have time for myself to relax. Sweet tea was and still is a staple in the Black community in the South. My childhood was a blend of these two lands. My father, an Arab Muslim from Libya, and my mother, an African-American Catholic from the Southern United States. Tea was a big deal in my family, and it was the beverage of choice at every occasion. But I've always wondered if the two were connected. Join me in discovering the connections between these two distant lands in A Tale of Two Teas. Our tale begins in Libya, the fourth largest country in Africa. Ancient sites, bustling city life, and artisans making their infamous Shahi al-Ala tea sets. We are heading to see the Libyan troglodytes, ancient people who live in underground homes. Welcome to Garain, Libya, where tradition is literally underground. Here, the troglodytes live in cave homes and have perfected the art of tea making over centuries. The process begins with loose leaf black tea, also called red tea, added in the kettle. Libyan tea is served in three rounds, each taking about 20 to 30 minutes. This gentleman was born in this cave and the higher he pours the tea over and over, the more respect it shows. The goal is to create a frothy foam known as regwa that tops the tea. But what did my mom think when she tried Libyan tea? One of my favorite experiences with Libyan tea was when we went to see the troglodytes. Surprisingly, the foam on top was really refreshing even though it was hot tea. For my father, Libyan tea was a cherished memory. My mom, she'd sit there, you know, start making the, the traditional Libyan tea. To me, it used to be a, a very special moment, you know, to spend with, uh, with, my, with my dad uh, and my mom. I know they're gone now, you know, but it, their memories always be there and those moments uh, those moments used to be very special to me, you know, because that's the only time, you know, I used to uh, spend time, you know, with my dad. I miss uh, both of them a lot. And that's why, you know, sitting down and drinking the tea used to be very special. Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's a memory is gonna, you know, always be in my mind and in my heart. In Libya, tea is more than just a drink. It's a ritual that's steeped in history, tradition, and connection. It's about spending time with your family. But how does this tradition connect to the sweet tea of the American South? Let's find out. Nothing says Southern hospitality more than an ice cold glass of sweet tea. I wanted to find out from my mom, what did tea mean to her and what was her experience with tea growing up in the South? My fondest memories aren't just about tea itself, but the rituals that surrounded it. Every Sunday afternoon after church, we would go to my grandmother's house. We finally called her Big Mama. Big Mama had a lovely porch out front and she had a great swing on that porch and always had a fresh pitcher of ice cold tea. And if you were really good, or her favorite grandchild, <laughs> as I often was, she'd let you sit on that swing with her. So I have such wonderful memories of sitting out on the swing, swinging back and forth next to my grandmother and sipping on a glass of ice cold tea. And what was my dad's experience with sweet tea? The first time I had Southern sweet tea when I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They make the tea and when I saw them put the tea, the water and the tea and then put it outside in the sun, like to me, like, I mean, what is that? And I had the tea cold. It was delicious, you know, I was like, that was a good drink. That was my first time I have uh, a cold tea. And then I've been having the, 
I stay sense. Libyan and Southern tea traditions share more similarities than you might expect. Both were originally served hot and symbolized hospitality. But the most interesting connection is historical. And it starts in North Africa in the seventh century, when Arab and Islamic traders spread tea, sugar, and the custom of sweetening drinks throughout the Middle East, North Africa, and eventually to Europe. Arabs introduced Europeans to sugarcane growing and sugar making. Sugar became incredibly valuable and had the nickname white gold due to its high cost. European countries needed cheap labor to make sugar less expensive, and this fueled the transatlantic slave trade. Yep, you heard that right. It wasn't cotton, but sugar that led to the transatlantic slave trade. And the reason was because enslaved Africans who worked on sugar plantations had an average life expectancy of just seven years because the working conditions on sugar plantations were so brutal and harsh. So in order to fuel their sugar labor force, Europeans continued to enslave more Africans, perpetuating the slave trade. But amid this tragedy, a remarkable resilience occurred. Enslaved Africans brought with them valuable knowledge and traditions from their homeland. In the South, these practices began to mix with European tea customs, forming the foundation of sweet tea that we know today. Now, sweetened tea evolved for many years, but it was mainly enjoyed hot. It wasn't until the 19th century, when refrigeration made ice widely accessible, that Southern sweet tea found its true calling, served ice cold. Today's glass of Southern sweet tea is a blend of different cultural influences. From ancient Arab sugar growing, to African herbal wisdom, to European colonialism, all are a part of its history, both bitter and sweet. Understanding the complex story of this simple drink reminds us of the profound impact of cultural exchanges, even those born from the worst chapters of human history. Tea is the story of all of us, our history, revolution, resilience, all in one sip. From ancient rituals to modern gatherings, tea remains a constant in the best and worst of times.